To me, it's all one story, because life is a story. I'm not writing superhero adventures, I am telling the story of these characters' lives. The X-Men back in the 60s was a commercial failure, ultimately. It got canceled. And when I said, gee, I don't know, should I get it off the X-Men, should I keep it? Chris just sort of sat there and went, I'll take it, I'll take it, me over here. It was a chance to get in on the sub-level and build the characters from the get-go. He cared desperately about this third string book, and he poured his heart into it. The impact was huge. X-Men sales went through the roof. People reportedly sent flowers and death threats to the Marvel offices. It was an era in which the creators were becoming stars, and that this was Chris Claremont's X-Men. And by the late 80s, it was outselling Spider-Man. The only way you could do this day in and day out was to convince yourself these characters were real. You pick up X-Men 100, you see the seven characters, you figure, okay, this is who they are. You pick up 200, the characters have evolved. The very success the X-Men eventually attained meant that those characters were going to just keep being exploited in as many properties as they could. They didn't want to do what I wanted to do, I didn't want to do what they wanted to do, and tempers carried everyone away. And I likened him uh, to Babe Ruth, because Babe Ruth didn't invent the Yankees, and Claremont didn't invent the X-Men, but each of them built a house.